If you live in Los Angeles, please vote yes on measure HLA in the primary election on March 5th. In 2015, LA created the Mobility Plan 2035, which envisioned a network of safe streets infrastructure, including bike lanes, bus lanes, pedestrian infrastructure, and even improvements to make driving easier and safer. However, the plan has barely been implemented, with only 5% of its total mileage being built. So why is this happening? The city is ignoring their own plan and choosing not to implement it when repaving streets. And why are they doing this? Well, Safe streets infrastructure like bike lanes has vocal opponents who convince city council members to stop improvements being made since they think it will increase traffic and make their lives worse. And at its current rate, it would take 160 years to build out the full mobility plan. And in a city where over 300 people a year die because of traffic violence, these safety improvements are critical. Measure HLA will ensure every street repaving over an eighth of a mile implements the mobility plan's recommended improvements for a given street, and it would provide an important accountability measure to make sure it gets implemented. It would allow people to sue the city for not following these new rules, and would award them litigation costs to ensure they don't lose money doing so. LA's roads are deadly, and HLA is critical to make lots of progress in a short amount of time since the city repaves about 200 miles of roads per year. It would roll out improvements like protected bike lanes which keep cyclists safe from faster traffic. And it would make walking safer by enhancing crosswalks with corner bulb outs, refuge islands, and more visible paint. These are interventions that are proven to make streets safer in other cities around the world. And these improvements are a critical element of Vision Zero, which is a transportation strategy from Sweden that prioritizes safety as the most important consideration when designing roads. LA has its own Vision Zero goal of eliminating traffic deaths or serious injuries by 2025, but they are unlikely to meet this goal because little has happened to fix its dangerous streets. I find this vote particularly important because in 2023, I went through something that far too many people experience. Someone I knew died because of traffic violence on LA's streets. And it really hurts to know that he may have lived had our streets been safer. HLA is not only important for the lives it would save, but for how much better it can make Los Angeles. By facilitating alternatives to driving like cycling, walking, e-mobility, or taking transit, LA's residents will discover new ways to get around. When this happens, smaller businesses can thrive in places where traffic makes it difficult to go. Developers will be encouraged to build housing with less parking and offer units to their residents for lower price. On busy streets like Melrose, cycling could be a competitive alternative to driving if it were safe to do so. But right now, it's not. Almost all of Melrose is on the mobility plan as a future protected bike lane. And in 2020, the city was starting plans to rebuild the street between Highland and Fairfax that would transform the streetscape into a much more welcoming place, including sidewalk level bike lanes. But city council member Paul Koretz killed the project. It's so incredibly frustrating that one politician can kill a street safety project against the city's plans. But HLA would fix this by requiring the mobility plan's implementation. With just how difficult it is to make improvements, it can be hard to imagine a more walkable and bikeable Los Angeles. But you can experience it during Ciclavia, which is one of the city's open streets events that happens every few months. It's actually the largest open streets event in the United States. Of course, it's a special event, but it's incredible to see just how many people come out to walk, bike, scooter, and skateboard on LA streets when the danger of traffic is removed. And it's truly amazing to experience. It makes the city seem smaller in a way, because you realize just how close places are together that you wouldn't normally dream of riding between. LA has incredible potential for cycling because of its excellent weather and relatively flat topography but there are plenty of places that are hillier and rainier that have much better bike commuting numbers because it is safer. But LA doesn't have to be more dangerous than other places. There are so many long, wide boulevards that can fit so many modes of transportation, including walking, biking, and buses. But right now, almost all the space is dedicated to cars. HLA would start to redistribute the road space to better cater to all road users, while moving people more efficiently than just cars can. And you may be thinking, this sounds great, but LA doesn't have good transit yet. Not everyone can walk and bike. But LA has one of the best bus networks in the country. 
The core network of local lines come every five to seven and a half minutes at their peak service hours. But these buses are slow because they get stuck in traffic. Measure HLA in the mobility plan would build more dedicated transit lanes that would allow these buses to take people to their destinations quickly. And when the bus gets faster, less buses and operators are needed to maintain the same level of service. So the city's transit agencies can leverage this infrastructure to make service more frequent or serve a wider area. Driving still clearly has a place in Los Angeles' transit landscape. There are some trips people need to make that will require a car. But safer streets make driving more enjoyable. It's incredibly stressful driving on roads that prioritize fast traffic and active pedestrian areas. Also, the mobility plan has specific provisions for driving with the Vehicle Enhanced Network, which calls for technology upgrades and parking restrictions that will make driving easier during peak traffic times. HLA will also make LA more accessible. LA streets may be hostile to pedestrians and cyclists, but they are even more hostile to people who use wheelchairs, mobility scooters, or walkers to help them get around. Measure HLA currently does not have that much organized opposition. Unfortunately, the United Firefighters of Los Angeles County Local 112 opposed the measure, claiming that the changes brought on by HLA will slow down their fire trucks and ambulances, saying that every second matters in emergency response. And they seem to have the support of LA City Council member Tracy Park, who has already been scaling down safe streets improvements in her district. But pedestrian infrastructure and bike lanes will not slow down emergency vehicles. If anything, bus lanes and bike lanes give emergency vehicles the opportunity to bypass traffic if needed. I know not all firefighters are like this, just some of their leaders. But it's sad to see this when a large portion of fire department runs are EMS, where a lot of these calls are because of traffic incidents that Measure HLA aims to prevent. I'm optimistic, and I don't think this is enough to prevent HLA from passing. But please, tell a few friends and family members in LA to vote for the measure. Every vote counts. I still want to address a few other critiques of Measure HLA. One is that the measure will be too expensive. The city administrative officer prepared a report claiming that Measure HLA's implementation would cost $2.5 billion over 10 years. They got this number because their analysis assumes that every street needs to have its sidewalks completely rebuilt when the plan gets implemented, and that building bike lanes costs $1.76 million per mile. And this is simply not true. HLA does not require full sidewalk rebuilds, just restriping and reconfiguration work on the streets. And bike lanes do not cost anywhere near $1.76 million per mile. LADOT estimates about $250,000 per mile. And on February 16th, the CAO made a last minute increase to the estimated cost impact and now claims it will be more than $3.1 billion. But even assuming the higher end of LADOT bike lane estimates, which is $350,000 per mile, implementation of HLA would be about $280 million total, $28 million per year over a decade. HLA and the mobility plan aim for simple and cheap interventions that keep people safe. The materials required to stripe roads a certain way don't get that much more expensive. For reference, the city's total budget is $13 billion per year. And over the next 10 years, the city will spend $10 billion on transportation, using money that can't be spent on anything else. There is plenty of money available to implement HLA, even if it costs more than it probably will. It's just extremely discouraging to see the city try to argue that doing something that will save people's lives is too expensive. We need HLA to force them to stop making excuses. Another critique is that HLA would not build a connected network of bike and bus lanes and take a piecemeal approach since it's tied to road resurfacing. But this is a status quo in our current system. Without HLA, we will never get to a fully built out network. Just a few years ago, LA built a brand new 6th Street bridge that cost over half a billion dollars. They repaved the street on both sides, but the protected bike lanes on the bridge just end. The mobility plan marks 6th Street as part of the bike enhanced network the protected bike lanes going into downtown on one side and Boyle Heights on the other. But the city did not follow the mobility plan after building the bridge, so there are just painted bike gutter lanes on one side and sharrows on the other. If HLA passes, the city will someday be required to finally connect the bridge to destinations people want to go, with safe infrastructure that they will actually use. Without HLA, 
LA did make some improvements to street safety in the past. Back in 2010, Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa got hit by a car while riding his bike. And in the years after, miles and miles of bike lanes got built. But when Eric Garcetti got elected, the network's build-out slowed down a lot. It's so critical that HLA passes to get some momentum going. Individual politicians should not be able to stop the hard work that planners and engineers have done to make Los Angeles safer. And I want to be clear about what HLA will not do. It won't tear up our existing dangerous roads to build the nicest concrete protected bike lanes that cities in Europe might build. Most will be quick build infrastructure that utilizes paint, bollards, and the like. But hopefully as momentum starts to build, this can evolve into more permanent infrastructure. Or the city's transportation agency can start using precast concrete that offers more protection for pedestrians and cyclists. They're more expensive than bollards, but much cheaper than full street rebuilds. HLA also won't build safe streets for the millions of LA County residents who live outside city borders. Some cities like Long Beach and Santa Monica have been leading the way, but others like Torrance are worse than LA and turn down safe bike infrastructure even when it takes no space away from cars. But HLA could make LA a leader and a model for other cities in Southern California. Bike lanes, bus lanes, and pedestrian infrastructure are not just nice amenities that some people will use. They are necessary interventions to move people safely and efficiently through the city. The current status quo of catering to driving as the only viable mode of transportation is not working. LA's residents are stuck in traffic constantly, and in some ways our leaders have realized this. LA is starting to build dense housing that promotes walkability instead of single-family sprawl that wants to find the city. A rail rapid transit network is getting built out slowly and surely, with a subway from downtown to the west side opening in a few years. But meaningful progress can never be made if our streets are not safe. HLA can be a turning point in the story of LA's rocky transportation history. The story of dense and vibrant neighborhoods connected by electric trains that were ripped out in favor of freeways and sprawl. But it can also be a comeback story, where the city leverages a multi-billion dollar investment in local transit, builds walkable, vibrant communities, and connects to the rest of the state with high-speed electric trains. If HLA passes, we take one small step in getting there. But if it doesn't pass, our leaders will point to its failure as a reason to not even try. So please, vote yes on Measure HLA.